Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. Happy, happy hour Tuesday in particular. Welcome to our mindful movement happy hour. Um, if you guys don't have some water, you know, next to you and maybe some comfortable clothes, go ahead and take a moment to, to do so. Um, you know, we're, once again, we have Re here just to kind of, you know, get us ready, you know, to not only stretch, but to really focus on that self-talk that we have when it comes to working out, getting active, you know, putting ourselves in spaces where maybe individuals are kind of, you know, they seem like they, they have more of a toned body or they know how, the, you know, how to get that workout in better than us or we don't feel that our form is, you know, up to par. Well, we're going to really talk about that today and just kind of hone in on just taking a moment to really be happy and, you know, proud of ourselves for even showing up. Um, so with that being said, just say hello to one another in the chat room and we'll, we'll go ahead and get started very, very soon. Um, but in the meantime, I would like to introduce myself. My my name is Jerrica White. Um, I am the college program coordinator here at NAMI Orange County, which stands for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And as a nonprofit, what we really do is promote education, advocacy, and um, support around mental health uh, in the community of Orange. And with that being said, we are funded by the County of Orange. So we will ask that, you know, if you do have the time, whether it's in between the session or even at the end to fill out a survey, let us know how you feel, um, whether you have some ideas for future happy hours, or if you want to give a shout out to Ree, please do so. Other than that, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started soon on a poll. But let's just go ahead and introduce you to our amazing, amazing host today. Everyone's saying hello, awesome. Hi, Beverly, hi, Nancy. Oh, got some resources in there. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. And Amanda also dropped a survey link. So feel free to just kind of keep that, you know, on one of your tabs and you can get back to it later. So today joining us, we do have Re, and as a certified personal trainer, you know, she does have her coaching abilities, whether that's to help you in some goals that you may have personally, um, or just to kind of empower you, right? I know I follow Re on social media, and it just reminds me just to be gentle with myself, right? Um, at the end of the day, our body is here, and, and it shows up for us, so it's important that we follow that with our mental, and we just, um, you know, we're patient. And things like that. And I think that the conversation we're going to have today is going to be a great reminder of that, especially with the title of today's happy hour, Mindful Movement. Um, so we're just going to get a nice 30 minute stretch in, you know, talk about that self talk and everything. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce Ree. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I was like, I'm on two different devices here. But um, hi, uh, I'm Ree. And let me get my camera going so you can see my face. Hey guys. Hi, Ree. I'm excited. <laughs> Do you yeah. want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself before we jump into the polls? Sure, yeah. So, um, hi, I'm a personal trainer and um, I, um, I kind of, this year I had to shift my personal trainer career and everything that I was doing to like this online space. So now I'm um, an online only fitness coach and I don't usually do Zoom workouts like this, but um, I support my clients through um, mostly every, so basically everything's online. <laughs> I know I messed that up saying that or trying to explain that, but um, my main thing is focusing on holistic health rather than just like a body goal or like weight loss or anything like that. We focus on the health overall, right? So how you feel, are you drinking enough water? Are you taking care of your mental health, your emotional health? Um, kind of taking everything together as one and taking care of your body um, through all of its needs. So. Beautiful, you know, we're big here on mental health so yeah. you can combine that together. I'm excited. Well, let's go ahead and do a quick poll check-in. I'm gonna go ahead and launch this, but um, first question is how are we feeling at this moment? And of course there is no right or wrong answer here. Um, but we do also, we would love for you guys to put your knee, um, however you're feeling in the chat room, please don't feel limited, limited to the options here. We would love to see how you're feeling today. For yourself, how would you say you're feeling, Ree? I would say I'm feeling a little tired, um, but happy. <laughs> okay. Yes, I, I was tired early on today, but then I went and got me a venti matcha and I've kind nice. of been 
kind of been riding that macho wave. So I'm feeling a little energized, I would say. Um, but I'm really excited. I haven't stretched in a long time. Yeah, in a lo- I can't even put a date on it. It's been a, <laughs> been a minute. Um, let's give it a few more seconds here. And then we'll go ahead and share with you how you guys are feeling. Oh, and if anyone um, hasn't already, go get yourself some water and set yourself up in a good spot to get, that gives you enough space because we're going to stretch. Yes, yes, yes. I got mine right here. <laughs> cool. I have mine right here too. It doesn't matter what the water's in as long as you got some water. <laughs> All right. So a lot of us are feeling tired. Well, hopefully the stretch will kind of get us energized. Um, and even the conversation I think will be energizing. Um, we got some people who are excited, hungry. It's definitely that time for dinner. Um, energetic, happy, awesome. So great. Okay. What about the next question? How often do you guys stretch? Is it every day, a couple times a week, a few times a month, whenever you think of it? You can't remember the last time. That was definitely me. I already kind of exposed myself there. Um, <laughs> haven't, but would like to work. Haven't, but I would like to work this into my daily routine. You know, that's something I definitely tried to do in the beginning of COVID. Try to stretch um, when I woke up and before going to bed. It's a lot easier when I first wake up rather than going to bed because at that point, I'm just like brushing my teeth, just knock out, you know? Um, But would you say as a fitness trainer that you're pretty good with stretching or how does that look for you? I Honestly, I could be better about it. Um, I used to... I used to spend like at least 15 minutes a day stretching. Like I made a point to like get that into my routine, but it's definitely something that I need to work back into like my daily schedule, just set the time. Cause it does help you like wake up and it does help you fall asleep. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah definitely. Would, would you say like there's such thing as stretching too much or is that kind of. Is that um, well, I mean, maybe, <laughs> but I don't think I've ever stretched too much. Right. Or maybe overstretching, right. Kind of like um, you might pull something in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys don't see any of your, your answers here, feel free to use the chat room. We would love to see how you guys are feeling. I'm going to go ahead and share the results here. Okay, we're tied for a few times a month slash can't remember what the last time I stretched. Um, someone does it every day. If you're willing to kind of, you know, raise your hand or maybe say that's me in the chat room, we would love to give you a shout out because I might need you like to be my accountability partner and <laughs> me just to remind me to stretch. A um, couple times a week, whenever I think of it. Okay, I think that's good too. Like whenever I think of it, right? Uh, same thing goes with like maybe like water. Like, okay, let me drink some water, grabs water, drinks it. Good old check-in. Okay. All right, do you want to present the third question? Do you ever feel intimidated at the gym? Yes, I'm not sure what work what workout routine is right for me. Yes, I feel like people are watching me. No, the gym is my happy place. No, I have a group class. I take that works for me. Oh, we like we like classes. Um, or you're unsure, you haven't really thought about it. These answer choices are awesome. Right? <laughs> yeah. We got Amanda back in tech there. We gotta we got give we gotta give tech a shout out, of course. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> uh, what would you say for yourself though? Where do you kind of fall in here? Um, I feel like it took a long time for me to get to this point, but I don't think I'm intimidated at the gym anymore. Um, but when I first started out, um, working out or I didn't really know like what to do or how to use machines, I definitely was super intimidated and I would just like, I would stay in like one little corner of the gym. Like I would either find like the fitness room, like the class, the classroom where there's like a mirror and like you just go to your little corner. Um, and I would just do that because just. I was so scared like to use any of the machines like what if someone like thought I would look I look dumb or yeah so I definitely like I get that you know Hmm. absolutely I would say the same for me the first time I really went to a gym was when I went to college you know kind of like that not it's not a free membership you're really paying for it Mm -hmm. um but I mean having all of those those different machines there I'm just like okay yeah it has instructions on there but do I really feel like taking the time and then what if someone else needs to use the machine that knows how to use it um things like that and then you know some someone going to try to come explain it to me cuz and I'm really just going to feel you know just kind of embarrassed or more intimidated um but let's see what you guys think here So most of us say no 
the gym is my happy place. That's awesome. You, you found comfort in that. That's beautiful. I would even say that's kind of a form of self-care, right? It's just like, okay, I know this is going to like boost my endorphins. I'm gonna feel better today. But also if it is your happy place, you have that space available. Um, and for those of you that put that, how did you guys feel with COVID? You know, when the gyms were kind of shut down, um, were you able to work at home or did you just kind of stop working out for that time being? How did that look for you? Um, Three of us said, yes, I feel like people are watching me. I definitely feel that, especially when there's mirrors all over the place. I'm like, they're looking at me, you know, they're over there, but I can see them looking at me over here through my, uh, through my reflection. Um, yes, I'm not sure what workout routine is right for me. Okay, I think we'll, we'll kind of get into that conversation for sure. Um, I would even say for myself, when I do find a routine, I, I often stick to it sometimes, or I kind of just fumble around with the same um, exercises and just kind of see, you know, what do I want to focus on today? And definitely listening to my body. I think that's really important. Um, and that might even fall, fall in line with holistic, you know, holistic healing, like you were saying, because um, that includes the, the emotional, the physical, and the, and the mental for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're some, some, another individual is unsure, hasn't really thought about it. Thank you guys so much for participating, by the way. All right, we do have two more questions. Uh, this is a two-parter. So for the first at the top, we're asking, do you have an accountability partner or someone you would like to work out with? If yes or no, go ahead and follow with the second question of who is that accountability partner, right? Is it a family member, a friend, um, a workout programmer, trainer, aka Re? Ooh, ooh, you can definitely reach out to her. She'll help you out. Um, is it a fitness app, a significant other, or do you take weekly classes? That's nice because it's like, it fits into your schedule. Where do you fall in line here, Re? Um, I do not have an accountability partner. I wish I did. <laughs> I would go by myself. Would you even say that your clients are kind of an accountability to like in oh, a way? Honestly, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because I feel like um, on some level, I have to set an example, right? Mm -hmm. Like how right. can I do something if I don't even apply it for myself? Yeah. And I've even seen on, on your, um, your website, you even kind of have those testimonials from your clients, which I think is just really empowering as an individual that may kind of feel like, oh, I'm not sure about having a coach, right? Especially if we were athletes, you know, um, kind of growing up, sometimes a coach can like that authoritative figure can be kind of stressful. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's awesome. Um, but let's see what we got here. And for myself, account of, uh, no, I would... My roommate, to an extent, I feel like when we feel like it, we're like, yes, but sometimes they're like, no, or she's like, oh, I'm going to go. I'm like, okay, let me change. You know, like it really depends. Um, but let's see how everyone else is. Wow. A lot of us do have an accountability partner. That's beautiful. And most of us, it's a friend or a significant other. Okay. Family member, workout, pro a trainer. All right. Or they take weekly classes. Okay. I like, I like how we have a good old mix and that you guys all showed up. Oh, wait, sorry. There's the results. I didn't share it with you guys. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful mix. I love that. Um, and for the individual who doesn't have accountability partner, you would like one. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can even find one here today. Awesome. Okay. And then for our last and final question, and then we'll go ahead and hop into our stretch here. Um, why do you work out? Um, if you guys want to go ahead and unmute yourself, please let us know. Raise your hand. We would love to hear what your motivation is. Um, or there's also the chat room. Whatever you prefer. Um, but what would you say your motivation is? Oh my gosh. So this is like a huge, like deep answer for me because I strongly believe in like um, really digging deep and finding your why. So it's so like why, especially in the beginning, like when you're first going into your fitness journey and you're trying to, whether it's for weight loss or whether it's for wanting like your dream body, like at first, sure, that can be like your motivation that gets you in the door. But at the end of the day, that's not going to get you to stick to that for a long time. You know, like what if you do end up getting that dream body that you want, then what, right? Yeah. Are you going to fall back on back to where you were or like, are you just going to backtrack or, or the opposite, right? So the way I think of it is like, you really should find a deeper why. So mm -hmm. for me, that's like, there's a lot of wow, I'm getting nervous trying to talk about this. But there's a lot of um, like health issues that run in my family um, mm -hmm. and people don't live very long, you know? So that's kind of my why. I want to take care of my health and I want to live to be a hundred if I can. <laughs> well, absolutely. I think that's a beautiful why, especially to the extent of like even being able to like run around with your with your grandchildren exactly. or even like your dogs, right? It doesn't have to be kids necessarily, but um, 
or cats, cats be running. <laughs> um, but, you know, I would say that that's, that's a beautiful answer. And I think that's something that it, it's forever, right? It keeps you going. Um, I know I've sometimes have seen um, elders on, you know, social media who are just like weightlifters, right? And they're just like, no, I love this. I live for this. I want to, I'm stronger than I've ever been in my entire life. Like, why should that stop in your twenties? And, and it really shouldn't. So um, yeah, I would say for myself, my motivation it really is that endorphins part, right? Of just like feeling better. Like sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to be super, super productive today at work, but then you get that workout in, in the beginning. You're like, okay, like let's bust this out. All the emails are cleared out from my inbox, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but a really good feeling. You might even clean your room, do some laundry. Like you never know. Um, but yeah, go ahead. And I see some people say that they will go ahead and let us know in the chat room. Um, I would love to read those off. And then if anyone wants to raise their hand, I'd love to um, unmute it for you. Let's see. Amanda says, my motivation is simply to get moving again and boost my energy after a long day of work. Okay, so Amanda does that at the end of the end of the day, right? After work, uh, maybe just to get ready to, you know, communicate with the family and everything. For myself, I definitely try to do it in the, the beginning um, or maybe even like during my, my break, right? Just kind of something at home real quick um, or even yeah. right around the complex or, yeah, but it, it looks different for everyone. Angelina said, self-care. I always feel less, less stressed after my workouts. I also want to model healthy behaviors for my daughter. Oh, family. Yes, I'm here for it. Absolutely, absolutely. But I like how you said model healthy behaviors, right? Um, so I'm, I'm seeing kind of like this connection between self-care and healthy behaviors, right? By, by kind of feeding yourself in ways that promote positive, you know, maybe uh, th uh, trains of thought or just even that physical aspect that really is, is that follows in line of that, the healthy behaviors. Um, and that's something that, you know, we don't even realize that kids are like sponges. They just kind of soak everything in and they, they notice everything that you're doing. So I think that just through those daily motions, I don't know if you work out every day, but you know, she definitely sees that. So that's awesome. I have fish. So, you know, maybe my fish team be working out and they'll do a little more, you know, some more laps <laughs> in their one gallon tank to <laughs> keep them motivated. <laughs> Right? Like, all right, she did a push up. Let me go ahead. <laughs> um, okay, Jessica said, my motivation is to stay healthy mentally and physically. Healthy body, healthy mind, smiley face. Absolutely. I'm also a personal trainer, so I have to practice what I preach. Okay. Oh, all right. Wow. So we have another coach in here. Beautiful. Or I don't know if you guys prefer the term, you know, coach or trainer, um, but happy yeah. to have you here. Thank you. Aisha said, I'm still trying to find my motivation. Well, hopefully we'll find it here. You know, we're going to have a deeper conversation as we stretch. Um, and with that being said, we just milked a good amount of time. You know, I think it's time to, to get our bodies nice and limber. Um, so I'm going to throw it over to you, Rhee, and I'm going to remove myself here. Um, but yeah, guys, feel free to go ahead and jump into the chat room. If you have any questions, if you'd like to unmute yourself, let us know. I'm going to go ahead and set myself up on the mat as well. Yeah, I'm um, going to get myself set up real quick, too, so you guys can see me. Yeah. And feel free to grab some water if you guys haven't done so yet. Yeah. And then I would really appreciate it if anyone wants to turn on their cameras so I don't feel alone. <laughs> um, but if you're uncomfortable, that's fine, too. You don't have to. Yeah, give yourself enough space. I'm going to be on the floor a little bit, so if you need a mat, go ahead and get one, too. Don't take screenshots of my toes. I will charge you. <laughs> That's not free. <laughs> not free. <laughs> Don't make me put my socks on. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's funny. All right. So I'm going to move back. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay or if I'm sounding muffled or anything. Just put it in the chat and I'll fix myself. some like piano music. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Yeah? Yes, I can hear it. 
Okay, I'm gonna turn you guys up too. And then we'll get started in just like another minute. Oh, hey, I see some of you guys turn on your cameras. I love that. We'll give it another minute or so, and then we'll start. I lied, maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> just down here so you can see me properly, okay? So if you can stand up, go ahead and stand up. And we're gonna start with some simple breathing exercises and getting our shoulders nice and loose, okay? All right. So everyone take a deep breath in and out. So when you take your deep breath in, I want you to pay attention to two things, okay? So pay attention to where your shoulders are moving and pay attention to where your stomach is, right? So when you're breathing, you don't want to breathe like this. You wanna breathe with your belly, right? You wanna take that deep breath all the way in through your belly, expand, and then come all the way out, okay? So bring your arms all the way up, breathe in. And out and release. Two more times, ready? Nice and slow, breathe in. And breathe out. Last one, breathe in all the way up. And if you're standing up, I want you to come all the way down and touch your toes, if you can. And let yourself hang here for a bit, yeah? Take a couple of breaths, really feel your spine come down. And then next thing, slowly come up, keeping your head down. You wanna stack your, vert your vertebrae one at a time. And then come all the way up, slowly. And then roll your shoulders back. Go in nice big circles. Really feel every inch of this movement. And we'll go forward. Nice and slow, really big circles. Good, now relax your neck, relax your shoulders, shake it out. And then do some half circles with your neck, going back. Go nice and slow. I'm sure if I have my mics on for all of you, I hear some cracking right now. All right, and now forward half circles. And we're gonna do a little something that's gonna seem a little weird, okay? So I, in college, I was in an acapella group, and one thing that we did all the time was massaging our jaw, right? So you want to really massage down and drop your soft palate. And yeah, this is supposed to be a vocal warm up, but at the same time, I found that it helped me relax my jaw. Like, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but when I'm stressed out, I tend to lock up my jaw and clench my teeth. So I really do the opposite here and relax. Let your soft palate come down. Massage up here. And even down here. It'll feel good. So give that a moment. Good. 
seems like the music is like following what I'm saying. It's kind of wild. All right, shake it out. Now we're gonna work our way down, right? So we started with our shoulders and our neck and our jaw. We're gonna work down to our back. So come into your hands and your knees. Let me move this so you can hear me. And then we're gonna do some cat cow. Go, so you're gonna go all the way up, rounding your spine and dropping your head. And then come all the way down and arch your spine and look up. Again, round. Really feel like you're tucking that belly button in and upward toward the ceiling. And back down and arch. We're gonna do that one more time and up. You should feel yourself going a little bit farther each time you do it. And then back down one more time. And then lastly, come back down all the way into a child's pose. And here you can do a few different things. You can either go more forward and drop the top of your, drop your, uh, drop your shoulders down, or you can come all the way back and get more of a stretch right here. And then just feel yourself get lower and lower into the ground and inch your fingers forward toward, toward away from you, sorry. <laughs> Take a couple of deep breaths here. And then come all the way forward onto your stomach. Bring your hands right next to your rib cage and press yourself up and look up. Come back down, take a breath, adjust your hands a little closer to your rib cage if you need to and press away from you and head up back. And then from here, go into child's pose one more time. Really try to elongate the spine and give your muscles some love. All right, next we're gonna go into our hips and then our legs and our glutes, okay? So bring one leg forward. You're gonna put this, I don't know if you can see this, but basically my leg is like this and my foot is facing toward the middle of me. So on this stretch, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to where your hips are, right? So if you're facing more like this, you wanna focus on having two little headlights right here, right? And face them right directly in front of you in line with your knees and go as deep into that as you can. This one's a bit challenging, so. No pressure if you can't go too low. And you can always move around and kind of feel for where you need the stretch most. All right, we're gonna switch sides. Bring the other leg forward. And same thing, remember the headlights facing forward. Open up the hips a little bit. And then we're going to switch one more time back to the other side. Whenever I stretch, I like to do each side more than once because usually past the first one, you'll go a little further down. And it'll feel like it goes a little I said that already. Goes further down. <laughs> Getting a little lost in the stretch here. And then one more time on the second side.
Cool? And then now bring your first side, whatever leg you had first, forward, and you're gonna go into a deep lunge. So your front leg should be in about a 90 degree angle with your front foot flat. Your back leg, you wanna get it as straight as you can and really try to bring your, your pelvis down. And again, headlights facing forward. This back leg can move. So feel free to move around here and really find where you need to stretch the most. You might all feel it in different spots depending on what's tightest for you. So for me, that's right here. For some people, it might be right here or right here. And it might be a little uncomfortable, but part of stretching is finding comfort in the uncomfortable. <laughs> for a second and switch sides. Like I said, front leg at a 90 degree angle, headlights, and back leg as straight as you can. to really press the, your lower back into the mat and engage your core. Sorry, I might get some water. I'm losing my voice a little bit. All right. So on our backs, back pressed into your mat, and then you're gonna grab one leg, pull it in toward you, other leg out, and nice and straight. can move it around, pull it in, you can even move your ankles in circles, get some movement in there. I know for a lot of us we don't get a lot of ankle mobility. Good, and switch. You want your lower leg as straight as you can and your upper leg as far as you can push it. And again, do some circles. Beautiful, and switch again. Give it a nice pull. And one more time, switch. Good. So next, grab the leg that's already up, put it against the ground like you're making a number four, and bring this leg in as straight as you can, keeping this one bent. Pull this one as much as you can. If you need to have a little bit of bend, go ahead. But for those of you who are more flexible, go ahead and really try to get that stretch in your hamstring. I can't go very far on this one. <laughs> Good, and switch.
Good, switch one more time. And last one. Beautiful, and relax. How am I doing on time? Let's see. Let's actually do one more, just because I really like this one. <laughs> But it's getting a bit intense. Let me change it. All right. So come on in and grab your feet in front of you. We're all shaped a little different here, so everyone's going to look different. But for me, my knees will come up <laughs> unless I go farther out. So give yourself some, um, some forgiveness if it doesn't look like the person next to you on the screen, but try to pull your legs as close to you as you can and try to bring your knees down as far as you can. If it helps to press them down with your, um, with your elbows, go ahead and do that as well. You can even rock around with it if you want to. So one thing about stretching, since we're coming to the end of it, is um, there's two types of stretching that you can do either before or after a workout. And the one kind of main thing that I, the music is like stopping when I stop talking. It's the wildest thing. <laughs> but um, what I'm trying to say is there's two types of stretching, right? There's dynamic stretching and there's static stretching. So when you're getting ready for a workout, you should be doing dynamic stretches which are basically, you're going through the full range of motion and you're going back and forth. You're not static stretching, staying in one spot and just holding it, right? Instead of doing that at the beginning, you should do that at the end. So if you're gonna do static stretching, do that at the end. I don't know if that got confusing for anybody, but I'll repeat it again. So um, dynamic stretching should go in the, in the beginning of a workout. So going through the full range of motion back and forth and static stretching should be at the end. So really cooling down and taking your time in one movement. So yeah, I'm wondering how everyone's feeling after that stretch. Go ahead and take a sip of your water, yes. I actually would love to know what, um, where do you guys feel you need more work in your stretches? Like in your upper body, in your shoulders, um, in your legs, your knees, your hips? What feels tightest for you guys? Your spine. What about anyone else? Because we do have a little more time here. I can spend a little more time on this. Okay. Arms and shoulders, sure. Cool. So well, let's let's go through all three of these then. <laughs> so we'll start with your spine, and then hips and hamstrings. Cool. Let me bring this back with me. This might help all five, six of you or whoever responded, but bring one leg out and one leg in. It could be either in front of you or behind you, whatever feels better for you. And then once you've settled into that position, bring your breath in all the way up. You wanna lengthen your spine here and then over. If you can't go very far, that's totally fine. What you want to feel for is right under here on your hamstring and all the way across here. So across 
um, your abs and your underarm. That's where you should feel it most. And then go ahead and take another deep breath in. All the way up, remember lengthen your spine again, face your leg this time, and bring your stomach as close to your leg as you can. You'll feel that a lot more on your back this time. Take your time here and inch your way closer to your feet. Beautiful. Catch your breath. We're getting some feedback from your mic, I believe. Is it from, did, it, did it go away when I moved my phone? Yeah, I'm not hearing it anymore. Thank you. All right. All right. So we're going to do it one more time over this way, okay? And then we're going to go again forward. So deep breath in. All the way up. And over. Take a couple of deep, slow breaths here. And with each, and with each breath, you try to get a little bit lower and deeper into the stretch. Okay, everybody. Let me see. It might be coming from me. It was actually from another attendee. I just muted them. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to go one more time forward. So bring your stomach close to your leg. So all the way up. Deep breath in, elongate the spine. Bring your belly toward your leg and down. And again, take a couple of deep breaths here and inch your leg closer with, with each exhale. All right, beautiful. Bring yourself back. We're going to do the other leg now. So switch. Bring this leg in. The opposite one out. And again, we're going to go over to the side and then forward. Okay, so deep breath in. Make yourself nice and tall. Elongate the spine and over to the side. I don't know if anyone has any experience with dance, but I, I took a dance class once and um, the instructor, she was, she was amazing, but she always like would tell us, point your toes and look where your arms are going. And I never thought much about that stuff, you know? So let's try to follow her and try to look where your hands are reaching. All right, and then we'll go forward, relax, deep breath in, elongate and reach. Beautiful, we're gonna go one more time to the side and one more time forward, deep breath in. And to the side. All right, and then deep breath in again. And forward. Beautiful. So that should have hit a little bit of your hamstrings, your spine, and now we're gonna go into our arms a little bit more, right? So hopefully you guys can see me when I do this. <laughs> so let's start with some circles. 
just big arm circles. You should feel them all the way through your back and your shoulders. Go as big as you can. Just don't let it. Good, and then go forward. This feels very high school PE to me. Very nostalgic. All right, and then bring one arm over and across. A little bit of a bicep stretch. So for this one, you really wanna drop the shoulder. You can move your wrist around in circles, that feels good. Good, and switch, drop the shoulder all the way across. Beautiful. Shake it off. We're going to do one more. Bring your arm all the way up and over. And then you're going to press back. And you should really feel that all along your tricep. And again, with every breath you take, you should try to go a little bit deeper on the exhale. Beautiful, and switch. Up, over, and press. And just like with the other stretches, we're gonna go one more time on each side. So go ahead. And then other side one more time. Beautiful. All right. Let me see. I didn't see comments. Which type of stretching do I prefer, dynamic or static? Ooh. I prefer static stretching because I usually do that on its own. So I don't, if I'm not like preparing for a workout or anything, it'll usually be after a workout or I'll spend the time a separate time just to do that. So I like really taking the time to like really see how far I can stretch my muscles, right? So I like that feeling. What about you guys? What do you like more? Static stretching. Cool. Haven't done dynamics since you were on the basketball team. Yep. Love the high knees. Just depends when. Oh, you're scared of dynamic? Sweating through the warm up. I love that. I was never in sports in high school, so I can't relate to that. But yeah, everyone, go ahead and take a sip of your water if you have some, try to cool down a bit. I know even just getting a good stretch in like that can be a lot. <laughs> but yeah. 
Thank you so much. That felt really good. And now my back feels nice and stretched out. Thank you for, you know, taking it back. Yeah, on I feel loose. yeah, I do. I do. I might have to go in the jacuzzi after this, get even looser. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Um, but do we have any more, any additional questions? I know Luis adds, asked some questions in our chat room. Feel free um, to unmute yourself as well or to raise your hand and we can unmute you. That felt really good. What would be your suggestion for those of us that have to sit at a desk all day to kind of take like a quick five minute stretch break? Ooh, I honestly, I would recommend doing anything that would lengthen the spine. So like maybe, I don't know if you guys can see, but standing up once in a while and stretching back if you can, stretching to the sides and bringing yourself all the way down to really lengthen out your spine. Cause when you're sitting all day, you can put a lot of pressure on those hips. Get, get a nice good back crack by the end of the day after seeing oh, you heard me chair. just crack a little bit, right? <laughs> I love what you're saying with rolling out our ankles because they don't get like moved enough and they were singing. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something to practice even when you're sitting at your desk. Just do some circles. I did have a question. So after when we were laying on our back and we did like the four, kind of four symbol, we brought our leg up and we... we brought it in should we try to keep our tailbone as close to the floor kind of like how we're keeping our back pressed to the ground um so but, yeah not not exactly so you can bring your leg in as far as you can and if that means your butt is coming off and your tailbone is coming off that's fine what I'm trying to prevent you from doing is more of here I'll show you trying to no, you can't see me let me let me get lower here So I'm trying to more prevent you from arching and rounding your back at the top. So right. here you see there's like a space between me here. Mm -hmm. So I want you to be flat here. Okay. If your butt comes up like that when you're stretching, it's totally fine. Okay, okay. Because so I was like trying to fight myself. I'm like, oh, that kind of, I'm like <laughs> overdoing it now. <laughs> yeah. And also when it comes to stretching, like everyone's a little different, right? for where you feel tight and like you're even your individual anatomy can be a little different. So if your stretch looks a little different than the person next to you, totally fine. Right. And then for that last part, you know, where we brought one of our legs out and the other one was in, you said you could also put it back. I was like back. And then I saw that you had it behind and it felt so much better. I feel like I was able to stretch. So I didn't even, I didn't even know you could do that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I like actually feel more comfortable when I do it that way. Me too. I felt the same way. Um, so like Louise said, definitely learned a lot more, you know, and you, you, stretching could just, you know, I feel like it's so expansive. Um, so definitely. Felt so good. Yeah. I'm not a yoga instructor, but if any of you guys like have never taken a yoga class before, definitely go do that because it's a whole different thing. Yeah, I love yoga. I'm trying to get back into that one. I need to stretch more. I don't do enough of that. I'm that person where I can't remember the last time I stretched and I get yelled at by my accountability partner to do that all the time. <laughs> I'm always ready to just jump into the workout. Yeah, definitely warm up when you work out. Thank you so much, Rhea. I went ahead. Oh, Beverly has oh, a question. question. Okay. Awesome. Do I have tips for getting into lifting? Ooh, yes, DM me, <laughs> DM me on Instagram, we'll talk about it. But um, if you're a beginner who's getting into lifting, um, I would say find someone who knows what they're doing, whether that's a coach or a friend and really get yourself comfortable around the weights and teach yourself or, <laughs> or connect with me <laughs> um, or really learn the basic form for each exercise before you try to go too heavy because then you could definitely avoid some injury. That's actually a good question. I know I see a lot of, like, even for yourself, I see you like deadlifting and I'm like, okay, that looks like a lot of weight, but you know, <laughs> or it matters, all of that. You gotta, you gotta be careful for sure. Yeah, definitely takes a lot of practice and a lot of like self-correction. Yeah. 
And just a quick plug in, you know, in terms of, oh, I see Jordan has a question, but I just want to say real quick, in terms of, you know, with mental health, you know, reaching out for resources, it may, you know, that moment of vulnerability, like we always say here at NAMI, that's that shows strength more than weakness. So even like to the extent of stretching or working out, you know, asking those questions that that also shows strength, um, just kind of, I want to know, I want to learn, I want to figure out a better way, maybe to feel more comfortable in this particular, um, maybe, you know, exercise or whatever it may be, even a stretch. So, um, you know, asking those questions, there, there's power in that. Absolutely. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Jordan's asking, how long do you spend stretching each workout? Um, so it would depend really if, I, if it's like a heavy lift day, usually I'll spend like five to 10 minutes warming up and then around five to seven minutes on like a cool down. And then on days that I'm not lifting heavy, like today, um, sometimes I'll spend a little longer doing some stretches, um, foam rolling. I even have like a massage gun over there that if the muscles feeling extra tight. I'll use the massage gun on it for a while. Mm-hmm. So it really depends. <laughs> I'm ticklish. So massage guns, it takes me a minute. I got to go like on the lowest, the lowest setting. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> but man, those are good too. Absolutely. No, it can be painful. Yeah. yeah. Any more questions? I went ahead and dropped, um, you know, ways to connect with Ree here. Uh, her Instagram is amazing. I, I personally follow her on my, my personal. So some days I'm like, you're right. I don't need to work out today. It's cool. I, I could take a rest day. Thank you. And then the next day we're like, let's get back into it. I needed that rest day um, just to kind of feel more energized. And of course her coaching website, like I said, there's testimonials on there, um, ways to connect with her. Um, even you can personal message her on the side here if you don't really want to share with everyone. Um, but man, if we could just give Ree some love, say thank you in the chats here before we uh, you know, transition into our resources. But I mean, I feel relaxed. I feel like I have more room to eat a big dinner. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you had room anyway. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely do not have to earn your food. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me. And thank you guys for some of you having your cameras on. Makes me feel less alone out here. <laughs> the virtual world. <laughs> awesome. Well, f- feel free to go ahead and ask any more questions if you guys want to in the chat room. And I know um, we'll go ahead and have our amazing tech individual, Amanda, here, um, who also is a part of our Tay team. Just kind of share some resources on how you guys can connect and what we have coming up. Awesome, thank you, Jerica, and thank you, Ree, for leading us through that stretch. I tell you what, I, I needed that. <laughs> Didn't realize how badly I did until we just getting into the pose and I was like, oh yeah, oh, that was tight. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, thank you all for joining us for happy hour tonight. Um, I hope, you know, you guys enjoyed it just as much as we did. Um, So I just want to go over a few resources we have here at NAMI. Um, So first off, we do have our OC warm line. So this is a free and confidential telephone service providing emotional support and resources to Orange County residents. Um, It is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, You can call or text them at their number 714-991-6412. Um, someone is always there to listen if you just want to chat or if you're looking for um, help in your area. Um, Up, we have our teen and young adult bulletin board. Um, So happy hour is one of our programs we offer um, for our teens and young adults here. And we do have our own special virtual bulletin board where you can go and check out what our latest events are coming up. Um, You can find resources throughout the community there, um, also mental wellness tips. Um, So that's constantly being updated with um, the new stuff that we have going on here at NAMI as well as within our community. So definitely check that out. Um, Our face-to-face. So this is a newer program we offer here at NAMI. Um, It is a Zoom meet with a personal mentor. um, And it is available to those who are ages 16 and up. Um, And for this, it's our mentors are there to really just kind of provide that additional emotional support through, you know, whatever you're going through in your life. Um, They're there to just talk with you um, and go over and provide support and tips. They're there to help you locate resources if you need it. Um, And it's amazing that we have it through Zoom so you can kind of have that 
face-to-face -face touch within. So you can sign up on our website. Um, Jerrica is gonna be dropping those links into the chat box. So anything you're interested in, check it out there. Um, and then uh, we have happy hour on Spotify. So each month um, we have specially curated player lists that pair directly with all of our happy hour events. Um, so go and check out kind of the latest tunes that we're listening to, that we're sharing um, through our happy hour, that we're playing kind of in the beginning or at the end of our events, um, and just kind of have those feel good playlists to carry with you. Uh, our survey. So yes, like Jericho was mentioning, we are a nonprofit and your feedback really, really matters and is super important to us. It's what allows us to continue programs like our happy hour um, at no cost for you. So if you guys could take just a few moments um, just to fill that out, let us know how we're doing, what was your happy moment, um, as well as, you know, what you would like to see in the future. Um, we would really, really appreciate that. Upcoming events. So August, we are getting into fandoms, one of my personal favorite topics to talk about. I feel like I've been teaching Jerrica quite a bit as we've been planning this one out. Um, but we have on August 11th, we have our honest hour and we're going to discuss this growing diversity within fandoms. So, you know, having more diverse superheroes that we get to see or how these fandoms are really inclusive and even create their own content in order to connect with different, you know, race, genders, um, even like ability. So we're really excited to get into that during Honest Hour. On August 17th, we'll have our happy hour and we're going to do a fandom trivia night. So join us to test your knowledge on whether you're the ultimate fan and we're going to be pulling some questions from different fandom groups such as harry potter um, lord of the rings star wars uh, marvel avengers and and much much more so join us for that it's going to be a lot of fun and then on august 24th we have our final happy hour of the month it's going to be harry potter and the missing therapist so we'll be joined by um the podcast host and creator of Potterless, Mike Schubert. Um, he's going to just be guiding us through a conversation where we'll look at the Harry Potter series and see, you know, where mental health is talked about and touched on, as well as if, you know, there was a therapist at Hogwarts with all the shenanigans that they get into, how much of that would have been different um, and really take that mental health into account during those books. So that's going to be a super fun conversation. We would love to have you guys a part of that. Um, so a lot of fun things um, coming up in August. We hope to see you at one of our events coming up soon. Uh, thank you all again. Thank you, Ree, for joining us for happy hour tonight. Um, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evenings and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Have a good night. Have a great night, everyone. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining and stretching with me.